Hello, my name is Cameron DeCamera and welcome to a tour of the IFC SDK. Today I'm going to tell you a little bit about the motivation behind the IFC SDK, what it currently offers at this point in time, and what it can offer in the future. Let's dive right in. Okay, so let's dive into the motivation here. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about a brief history of the IFC container format itself. The idea of the IFC was first publicly introduced back in Gabby's talk in CppCon 2015. In this talk, Gabby introduced what the IFC container is as a format, as a on-disk format for C++ modules. Then in CppCon 2019, Gabby elaborated further on what this IFC is in his talk, In Memory, Persistent Representations of C++. In that talk, he introduced the world to the IFC spec repo, which contains the specification for the IFC container format. And finally, in 2023, just last year, the Visual C++ team blogged about the IFC SDK, which complements the IFC spec repo in providing the C++ projection over the IFC specification defined in the IFC spec repo. And it's here, which is where the focus of this particular talk is going to be. All right, so let's get back to the core motivation of why we're doing this IFC SDK thing. And there's kind of three leading ideas. One is that we observe this gap in C++ semantics-based tooling. And what we kind of mean by that is there's, there's a lot of tooling that focuses on the data that the parser emits. And there's a lot of tooling that focuses on the final binary that is emitted once you pass it through the linker. However, there's actually a very small subset of tools that focus on the semantics of elaboration in between. And this is kind of where the data of the IFC sits and where um, IPR, which the IFC is built on, also wants to operate. So we saw the IFC SDK as an opportunity to help bridge that gap. The other thing we wanted to do was create transparency about the MSVC internals. So what you see in the IFC SDK is actually code that's running in the MSVC compiler to drive all of the modules machinery behind the scenes. And finally, we wanted to reduce friction for other compilers to take a dependency on the IFC. If we provide this uh, SDK for them, there's a pretty good chance that we can sort of reduce the amount of work that it takes to adopt it and actually use it in their compiler, since all of this stuff is already being used in production today with MSVC. So, so let's finally get into what we're going to cover today, which is the IFC SDK itself. And it's kind of broken up into these five pillars today. So the first one is providing a C++ projection of the IFC specification, so the data structures that the IFC specification defines. Uh, the, the second one is testing, currently MSVC only a basic terminal printing of an IFC, the IFC driver tool, and finally the IFC visualizer. So let's go into the most obvious one, which is providing the C++ projection of the IFC specification. And to do that, let's go ahead and check out the repo, build it, and then kind of explore what the code has to offer. Okay, so I have a fresh clone of the IFC SDK repo. We can kind of check where we're at using git log online, right? So this is this is a commit that was made fairly recently. So we know that um, we're on a recent version of the IFC SDK, and we also know from status, status that we are also clean. Okay, so let's get building this thing. So the first thing that the um, build step tells us to do, and you can find the build instructions at the root of the IFC SDK repo um, called building.md. It tells us to um, kind of figure out what our package manager situation is. Um, and one pack, it's, it's kind of specified as a bring your own package manager situation. And the package manager that I like to use is VC package. So VC package, and because I'm using the, um, the, the built-in version of VC package that comes with Visual Studio, and this is a Visual Studio command prompt here, um, I actually have to add my own baseline. And all of this stuff is covered in the building instructions. So X baseline, and then we want to 
add initial baseline. And that's just going to make it so that VC package populates an automatic baseline for us. So now that that's in place, we can get to the build step. So we just want to cmake build or uh, cmake dash b build, and then we want to add a preset, and this is going to be um, test msvc. Okay, that seemed to work. So now we can build it. So we can use cmake dash build, and the config we want to run is release. And that's just going to build the thing for us. Now that we have a build of this thing, we can actually go in here and run the tests. So one thing we can do is we can go to the build directory itself. Um, and again, covered in the instructions is how to run this. So we want to run ctest-c release. And then we want to test test. And that passed. And if you want to run the tests yourself, you can do something like IFC test and then release. And this is the actual test that's running underneath. So you can see that we passed all of the assertions, which is a really good sign that we have a good we have a good build of this thing. One last little gold nugget that the CMake process provides for us is an actual solution that we could take a look at, a Visual Studio solution. So we're still here in the build directory. Um, we can take a look at what we have here. And one of these files in here is the IFC SDK solution file. So what we can do is we can just do start IFC SDK solution, and that should pull up the IDE for us. So now that we have the IDE up and going now, um, we can kind of go over here to our Solution Explorer and take a look at all of the projects that are populated for us. And this IFC basic thing is actually the test that we executed earlier. So if we take a look at what this thing is doing, right? Um, what this file is doing is it reads in an IFC that's produced by the currently, um, currently available MSVC compiler, and it's going to perform some various checks against that. IFC versus what's defined in the IFC specification. So if you go down here to some of the uh, some of the checks, you can see that it's validating that hey, you know this IFC is actually adhering to the IFC specification that's produced from the compiler itself. But the other great thing is that now that we have a full IDE, we can actually search for files here. So if we go to abstract s graph here. This is actually the core file that defines the vast majority of all the data structures for the IFC. And um, all of these are really kind of just helpers uh, to, to help populate this particular file. And uh, this is a really good complement to the IFC itself, the IFC specification itself. And let's go ahead and pull that up side by side just so we can get an idea of like what we're looking for in this file. Okay, so I have here a copy of the IFC specification. And in this specification, it's shown that um, we're using version 0.43, which is currently what the IFC SDK supports. And this, this actual specification can be found at the uh, IFC spec repo under the Microsoft GitHub Corporation. So if we scroll down here, um, we can check out the table of contents, and this has everything that the IFC can produce. Um, but let's go to a very simple example, like declarations, for example. And we can see that here's the table of declarations, and here's how everything is sort of laid out in memory. Um, and here are the available declarations that we have to choose for, from. And in the IFC specification, in the IFC SDK itself, uh, this thing is called decal sort. So here is the actual enumeration, which represents all of those values that you see in the IFC itself. So whenever, we, whenever we're talking about, like, let's say, enumerator, we would expect that to have the value 1 inside of this sort list. So we can see that, yes, its value is 1. And let's go to something a little bit more complicated, like function. So function is 0f, which is 15. 
and we would expect function in here to be 15, which it is. And the same is true for anything else here, along with the description of what it actually does. So this is kind of how uh, one might map the IFC SDK to the IFC spec repo and, and sort of like validate that way at a high level. Okay, so let's refocus our attention back on the IFC SDK overview. So we actually also kind of cover the testing in MSVC, which, which I showed in the build step. So let's go back to our overview and refocus our attention on the terminal printing from an IFC. So to get started on this, let's actually build a small module so we can sort of observe what the printing is going to, what we expect the printing to print for us. Um, so I have here a small uh, module interface in Visual Studio. All I did was I set the, um, I set the language standard to C++ latest. And what we also want to do is we need to know where the build artifacts are going to go. So to do that, we want to set the build and run uh, verbosity to something like detailed so we can figure out where MS build is actually going to put everything. Let's go ahead and get this building. So the build succeed. Now in the output window, what we're going to look for here is we're going to look for IFC output. And that is the com compiler switch that tells us where the IFC is going to go. And you can see here that MS build put it in this directory here for us. So let's go ahead and copy that. And once we have that copied, we can go back to our command prompt. And here we are back in the IFC uh, SDK, and we're in our build directory. So we're going to go release and IFC printer. And then we're going to provide it that directory, that MS build output for us. And here you go. You can sort of see all of the pieces that MS, that are contained within that IFC. And you can see where our struct is. Here it is. It's actually named life, like we expected. And you can see some of the other various informations that's printed out here. And that's that's really just kind of the high level of how you use the IFC printer. It's, it's a little bit hard to grok um, if you're not familiar with the structure of it. But we have the visualizer to kind of bridge that gap for us. So that might be the next thing we take a look at. All right, so let's actually go ahead and tab over here to the IFC visualizer itself. So one thing we can do is we can go back to that directory where MS build dropped our artifacts into, specifically that IFC, and we can take that IFC and drop it onto this canvas here. And here it is, it's serialized in through JavaScript using the IFC specification as the backing to kind of interpret all of the data. Um, so it literally read that IFC on this web page. And we can kind of like navigate around here and see here's that question namespace that we had from before. Here's life, right? Here's like the answer. Um, all the stuff that you would expect to see in the IFC in that in that module interface is all present inside of here. Um, and we can do fun things like perform queries against this. Like what if we wanted to find like question, for example, like so it narrows it down to just that. Um, we can also narrow it down by type. So if we wanted to find only functions, for example, like there's our one function. And there's lots of helpful options like color customization or being able to transpose the graph in case you want to view it, um, you know, kind of in a different way that might be more familiar to you. So there's a lot of options here and it gives you a lot of power in just visually exploring what's available in the IFC itself. Um, and again, this is just a web page, so it works across all operating systems that support, you know, your basic JavaScript stuff. Okay, let's go back to our overview. So we just finished talking about the, the basic terminal printing that the IFC SDK can offer. And we also talked about the IFC visualizer, which is written in JavaScript. And the final tool we're going to take a look at is the IFC driver tool. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our command prompt where we were in the IFC SDK. And uh, to demonstrate the tool, we're really just going to be using um, that same IFC we generated with Visual Studio. So to invoke the tool, we're going to we're going to call IFC itself from the release directory. We're going to give it the subcommand version and then provide it with the IFC that we want to get the version of. 
And what that does is that reads and validates the signature of the IFC and tells us what the version is of that specific IFC. This is currently the only existing subcommand of this particular tool, and eventually it will be extended to include more subcommands as time goes on. So this is kind of getting into the future of what the IFC, of what we view the IFC SDK going, uh, the future direction. Yeah, and I just wanted to say thank you for taking this tour of the IFC SDK with me, and we hope that you will go out and uh, try out the IFC SDK for yourself and decide if it's the right set of tooling for your compiler, and um, perhaps it offers the, the correct abstractions for your data structures and that we can create an ecosystem together. Yeah, so thank you all. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Cameron DeCamera, and today I'm going to tell you a little bit about... <laughs>